Well, as you can hear, it appears that the compressor relay in this dehumidifier is stuck again. I know the relay is stuck because when the fan is off, the compressor should be off as well. But right now you can hear the compressor is still on. Last time when this happened was a few months ago, and I knocked on the case a few times. The relay eventually became unstuck. Of course I can do the same thing here again, but I think I'm going to swap in a new relay, and we can permanently fix the problem. And by the way, this problem is fairly common in these high inrush current switching applications, especially for dehumidifiers, as it cycles on and off all the time. And I have had this Frigidaire dehumidifier for about 11 years now, so I'm not surprised that the relay had failed. To get to the controller board, I had to remove the side panel, and the controller board is in that black box to the right. After I remove the cover, you can see we have three relays in this model. The big black one is the one needs to be replaced. It's a single pole, normally open relay, and it's rated for 20 amps, and the coil voltage is 12 volts. Here, I took another picture of the controller board. The general layout is pretty neat, and you can see that the board is actually made for multiple models, and a lot of the components are not populated for this model. Towards the top, you can see there's a three terminal regulator, and it's not bolted down. For stationary applications, like in a dehumidifier, it probably doesn't matter that much, but it is still not ideal. And in this picture, you can see the reverse side of the PCB, and I circle the relay footprint. I don't have an exact model of the replacement relay, but I do have one that is spec the same, and is from Tyco Electronics, so it should be a drop-in replacement. So this repair is actually fairly straightforward. All said and done, it took less than half an hour. Anyway, now you know what the symptom is of a stuck relay or a fuse relay, and it's fairly easy to replace it yourself. And here is a relay I had removed from the dehumidifier. I do want to open it up and see what the contacts look like after all these years. Alright, I just cut open the relay, and let me get a close-up of the contacts. You can clearly see that the contacts are eroded, and there was probably some arcing going on as well, as the contacts are charred. Anyway, let me try to discharge a large capacitor using this relay, and to see if we can weld the contacts together. Okay, so here's the setup. Back there I have a capacitor bank. There are 8 of these 4500 microfarads capacitors in parallel, so altogether that's 36,000 microfarads. And I'm going to charge it up to about 33 volts and then discharge through the relay here. Alright, now I'm going to charge up the capacitors. Okay, so now the capacitors are charged, I'm going to energize the relay. 3, 2, 1. Well, that was a little bit underwhelming. I was actually expecting a louder bang. But I think the relay contacts are actually now welded. And yeah, let me just verify that. So now let's do a continuity test. Actually, did you hear that it just became unstuck again? Actually, we can do it again. Alright, let's give it another try. Let me first charge out the capacitor. And 3, 2, 1. Now it appears that the contacts are fused again. So let's carefully remove these. I don't want it to pop back open again. So let's do a quick measurement. As you can hear, now these contacts are welded. And here's a close-up of what these failed relay contacts look like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.